Here on this Tobacco University video, I'm going to go over an overview of Far Red's impact on cannabis production. So here we're going to be looking at Far Red's impact, which is the wavelengths right down here. So let's get into the video. Well, first off, let's define red light, which you might be more familiar with. And red light is at least as effective as other colors of light at promoting plant growth. While red light may not be the most efficient uh, color for general illumination for people, for high lumens, it is among the best colors of light to stimulate plant growth due to the role in photosynthesis. If you only grow plants under red light uh, with no blue light, they will be elongated or kind of a stretched uh, internode spacing. Red LEDs are the most efficient of the colors, and that's why you typically see them a lot of times integrated to those particular light sources. And again, here's that kind of red light spectrum located right in this area. Now here we're going to talk about far red light, so a little different, uh, some similarities, but a little different, as far red influences the size of the leaves, the length of stems, and ultimately the height of the plants as well. Far red may take some, uh, may make some plants flower earlier, so there could be other impacts when giving plants far red light. To measure it, you need a spectrorhodometer, which is a light measurement tool that is able to measure both the wavelength and the amplitude of the light emitted from a light source. However, this comes at increased cost due to internal complexity of the device, so you want to make sure you have the proper device if you, to capture this particular wavelength if you're looking at doing a study or looking at really at analyzing exactly how much you're giving plants. And this far red light is in that 700 to 800 nanometers in length. We can see the change in a tomato plant and what looks like a squash plant as well. Control plants versus giving them far red, we can see that definitely that much more stretched appearance. Now, light's ability to penetrate the leaf. So if we're looking at comparisons of kind of different wavelengths, notice that both the green and also the far red light penetrate deep into the leaf. Blue and red are absorbed mainly in the chlorophyll, which is located in greater concentrations on the upper leaf surface. However, the deep penetration suggests that structures other than chlorophyll are responsible for the utilization of these particular wavelengths. If most of the chlorophyll is at the surface, it makes sense for blue and red to be absorbed there, but if they're being able to penetrate deeper into the leaf, there may be other uh, methods or me methods for the plant to absorb that particular light energy from those particular wavelengths. So plants response to shade. So uh, reductions in the red to far red ratio, the RFR ratio, 660 nanometers to 740 nanometers uh, proportion are the most predominant. So on the left here, we have the y-axis for full sun data. In the right, we have the y-axis for both uh, moderate and deep foliar shade data. And we're seeing a comparison here. So again, here's our full sun, and here's our kind of our moderate to deep shade kind of colorations. If we see the moderate to deep shade, we're seeing a definitely jump up or an increase here in the uh, photon flux there. So what does this kind of tell us? Well, that kind of goes back to that ability for it to penetrate deeper into the leaf surface. So far reds and under leaf comparison. So we have the over leaf, we have the under leaf. Uh, above and below leaf spectrums comparison uh, here in this uh, chart provided. Notice how the under leaf still receives about 50% of the total far red compared to the minimum percentage of other colors. So when I say minimum percentage, you're like, well, it's pretty equal. Well, look, comparison to the greens, the yellows, some of the oranges, and some of the reds, we're seeing it's a large space. There's a large gap there, and the king is receiving a very small percentage. Here, where the far red is only this tall, we almost see an increase. The distance here is almost halfway. About 50% of the total far red it's able to abs absorb under the leaf as it is in comparison to over the leaf. So that's kind of an important part of this image here. Now the red and far red kind of ratios. So the ratio of red and far red changes in full sun versus shade conditions. Full sun has equal red and far red. Under plant shade, most of the red is used, but the far red will reach the shaded plant. As you see here, so direct sunlight is our canopy shade. When we get to that far red spectrum, we notice that uh, amount relative photon flux density percentage increases dramatically. This will induce shade avoidance by changing morphology and can induce early flowering in some plants. Shading from another plant reduces both the light intensity and also changes the light quality. Changes in quality include red to far red ratio. So in direct sunlight, the ratio is about 1 uh, to 1.4, and in the shade, the ratio is only 0.23. So it's a massive shift in that. 
Now, far red uh, plant shade impacts. So here's that same comparison here. We're looking out the far red normal morphology should be a plant that looks like this. If there's a shade avoidance plant, it's grown in kind of the shady location where we're, in, we're kind of looking at the wavelengths here are under the tree. Well, we see shade avoidance, they're going to have small leaves and they're going to stretch quite a bit. If they're a shade tolerant plant, this same amount of light or kind of filtered spectrum of light, they're going to have a much shorter compact kind of uh, morphology and the leaves will become a little bit wider as well. And again, this under the shade, remember direct sunlight, where all these leaves are getting the direct sunlight under this tree are going to be what's called the canopy shade. We see that spectrum definitely shifts and changes for those plants and in this example, so their morphologies. Now looking at petunia seedling growing under different light for another little source of comparison. B is blue, R is red, F, R is far red. Micromoles uh, per meter squared per second is the subscript number. And high versus low light intensities of red and far red while keeping blue light intensities constant. So we see kind of some great kind of images here in comparisons. The blue light, is our subscript, is consistent through all of these trials. We see but the plants look very different. Well, we're changing, or in this study, changed the amount of red and far red that the plants were receiving. So that um, Intensity is the subscript number, so we can see that in this case it was given twice as much red versus far red. Here it was given equal red and far red, and we can definitely see the changes in morphology. They measured specifically plant height, and it gives you that nice little comparison to see what impact the different wavelengths can have on the morphology of the plants. Now, interaction of red and far red and PPFD. So remember that's um, photosynthetically photon flux density. Transplanted seedlings from previous slide to a greenhouse now. So that was kind of the seedling stage. Now let's go a little bit longer in their life. All grown under the same conditions, including light after transplant. So what's kind of an interesting note is that while these plants started here and they got different light treatments, they were then all moved to a greenhouse setting and they all got normal light. So how does the seedling environment impact the flower cycle? And we can see that there is some differences. Plants fa flower faster under high light uh, intensity light and also when grown under far red light. So we see that shift there when they had equal blue and red, they weren't even flowering and we could see a shift in the days to flower from transplant with the blue and the intense red and far red being the quickest here for days to flower after transplant. So just an interesting note that in the seedling stage, the wavelengths that plants are given can have impacts when they get older, even if there's a transition point where then they're all given consistent amount of lighting, at least here in petunias. Now the impact on yield with adding uh, far red, since that's probably like an interesting thing to kind of take a look at. Far red is in the 700 to 800 nanometer wavelength range. So it is outside of the PPFD range of measurement, which only takes into account 400 to 700. Lettuce is a leafy green that shows great response to far red light, because you're typically growing it for that kind of um, leaf material. Reduced PPFD in far red trials attempts to provide all plants with consistent P a PFD of 350 micromoles per meter squared per second. Here we're looking at dry mass. This is again looking at lettuce yield with far red added. Dry mass uh, data here was normalized to have the 350 PPFD trials be in even 100 grams. So they were normalized here. And those were set at 100 so we can have a much easier visual comparison. Both trials had far red um, added improved yields with the white or full spectrum light having the largest yield overall. So this is in comparison to the red-blue only wavelengths compared to the kind of white wavelengths. So as we see here, not only are we having an increase in overall yield, but in addition we're being able to diagnose potential plant problems with this full spectrum LED light as well. So better yield and better to diagnose disease overall, uh, probably a more favorable light. And if we add the far red, again getting that increase in dry mass as well. Uh, and just a side note on the study that they were run at 300 because they were assuming another 50 was coming from the far red to keep that 350 um, amount of intensity of light the same, only changing the spectrum that those plants were given. So added far red light can increase cell expansion. So control in far red, we see with tomatoes, soybean, cucumber, and spinach, the difference in morphologies, pretty stark and different. Even here, just looking at them, we can definitely see that there is overall an increase in plant height when we add that far red there. Now common light sources and percent far red produced. Here's just some you might be familiar with, maybe CMH lights or high pressure sodium lights. Just as a, as a note, sunlight does produce 20% far red light. 
However, when we saw the comparison before, why don't all the plants super stretch at a very high amount when we're looking at sunlight? Well, keep in mind sunshine also has high levels of blue light, about 27% in UVA, which reduce cell expansion and stretching. So there's kind of that like balancing effect there. Some of these other lights are just producing more of that far red with a reduction in that blue wavelengths, and that's why you tend to get some more of that stretching. Now what's far red's impact on cannabis production? Well, far red can cause cannabis plant stretching, so it is advised to be of greater importance later in the growing cycle. Far red exposure may also induce earlier flowering times in cannabis, so that should be make note of that. When growing outdoors, the high 20% far red is counteracted by the very high 27% blue light spectrum. So don't say, oh, sunlight's got 20% far red, let me give my plants 20%. Remember, sunlight is giving a bunch of other spectrums as well. When measuring light, a PFD meter will take into account UV and far red light, but this should only be done with LED lights and not high pressure sodium lights due to the strong infrared spectrum they also produce, which will, might give you an artificially high reading uh, of PFD if you're taking into account those additional wavelengths. Now, if you want to learn more or where this kind of information came from, special thanks to all of the researchers um, shown here sharing their information. Hopefully you're able to glean some information from what I've kind of summarized and presented here um, as a way to kind of better understand light's impact on cannabis plants.